All right, so if you're watching this playlist, you have probably reviewed kinematics, and kinematics is where we describe for our movements. So the description of human movement, joint motions, velocity, displacement, distance, acceleration in both the linear and the angular worlds. So now we're moving into forces and torques, and those are the, the, the components that generate motion. So the source of the movement that we had been describing. So forces, first off, are acting upon the body, within the body, and by the body. All right, so a few questions to think about. A ground reaction force, which is the force that we apply to the ground and the ground applies back to us, causes forward moment, movement. Describe how this is accomplished and factors that you can adjust um, to alter that movement. Give an example of a force causing motion from a sport activity that you're involved with. All right, so, so first, um, hopefully, whether you've taken physics or not, you think of action-reaction, right? So if I apl apply a force to the ground, it applies an equal and opposite force to me. So how does that cause forward movement? Well, it better be pushing me forward and not backward. So basically, the alignment of that force, how it's applied to my foot, will either make me go in the vertical direction or in the horizontal direction or some component uh, um, in between. So I'm going to invite you now to review resolution of vectors. All right, and so there's some videos on that. Um, so basically this is accomplished by applying an equal and opposite force to the ground. And the factors that you can adjust are the alignment of that force that you're applying to the ground. So give an example. Um, when I run, every step I take, I am propelling myself forward. So I'm applying um, a force to the ground kind of down and backwards. And it's applying a force to me, which is in the vertical direction and forward. So what do forces do? First, notice this link. Force produces motion, all right? It produces motion, it stops motion, and it prevents motion. And so you can think of scenarios in activities of daily living, sport, exercise, fitness, whatever your rehab, whatever you're involved with, um, this is kind of the, the format or the, the lens that you're looking at force through. All right, so we need a few things to describe a force. All right, so we need three things. The magnitude, is it a big force, a small force? You can quantify that force, which you'll do in lab. The direction of force, did it push me up? Did it push me back? Did it push me down? Did it push me over, etc. And then the point of application. Forces due to gravity, uh, um, we assume that they are applied at the center of gravity. Um, muscular forces apply at the muscle attachment, right? If I engage my biceps brachii, it is pulling at that point on my radius to um, create a flexor torque. Or um, where the external force hit me, if you will. So if somebody punches me, um, somebody would say, um, where does it hurt? If it hurts in your cheek, your zygomatic process, it's probably that the point of contact or point of application of that external force was on that spot, right? And so um, clinicians or parents or whoever is trying to assess injury that can result from force is, is looking at magnitude, direction, and point of application. All right, types of forces. You can have non-contact or gravity. Those are due to gravity, right? So Gravity pushes you down on the ground. Sometimes when I'm running, I misstep and gravity pulls me to the ground. Nobody pushed me, nobody tripped me. Um, just kind of my um, lack of coordination at that moment or a, a motor control mishap and gravity um, is always acting on us and caused a crash with the ground. There's also contact forces, friction forces. So between you and the ground and you, and when I say between you and the ground, all of a sudden you should think, oh, shoe wear. Look at all the different types of shoe wear and all the, the research going on with spikes, um, the material of the, of the bottom of our soles, of our shoes for anything, walking, running, sport, the 
length of spikes deals with friction depending on on pitch conditions, et cetera. Um, and then one big contact force is our ground reaction force, and that's the force that we apply to the ground no matter what we're doing, jumping, running, hopping, skipping, playing any sort of sport, walking, et cetera. And then we can think of um, the response of these contact forces in external to the body or internal, right? Sometimes when I trip, I might put um, an increased tensile force on my uh, anterior cruciate ligament. All right, we'll look at specifics in the next video.